Hello, I'm Eduardo Fernandez, and we're going to talk about some aspects of classical performance practice. And the first thing we need to know is that we know we have the text, we have the notes that the composer wrote, and I would recommend that you get a, an edition of the time, if possible, not a modern one. But this text needs, needs to be read in a context. The context is like an invisible aura around the text that makes you understand the way the text should be read. And this is extremely important in any period. We are not aware of this in a work that was written maybe last week, because this is invisible for us. But this context changes with time, and the performance practices change with it. So this is one thing we, we need to consider. And I'll be talking mostly about these questions of context, and also about another thing that I think is very important. Uh, the generations of uh, guitarists that have Sor and Giuliani and Legnani and Aguado and others, uh, they all rose practically at the same time. In a period of 13 to 16 years, they were all born and they were all active. And at the time, the guitar was just beginning to appear as a concert instrument. You could say they invented the guitar as a concert instrument. The guitar has, had just lost the double strings and had acquired a sixth string. This happened more or less at the end of the 18th century. So these composers were really trying out a, a completely new instrument. And every one of them found different solutions to how to use the guitar. So each of them developed their own school, their own set of practices in the instrument. And we need to know that because they are also part of the context. At the time, it was usual that a virtuoso played only his own works. They would not play works by others except in very, very special circumstances. So the works they wrote were written for themselves with this particular interpretative and technical context in mind. And we are going to be talking about all this, which I think is very interesting. Tempo is basically determined by three things, and it results from a constellation of these three elements. One element is the word indicating the tempo. A second one is the meter in which, in which the piece is written. And a third one is the figuration, that is the basic unit in which the piece moves. Let's take it one by one. The words indicating tempo. We know that allegro means fast and adagio means slow. This is universal and everybody agrees on this. There are also words meaning faster than allegro, allegro assai, allegro molto, allegro con brio, presto. And there are words indicating slower than adagio, adagio molto, largo, larghetto, grave, and so on. In the middle, we have an intermediate, an intermediate tempo, which is andante, uh, which is neither slow nor fast. Andante comes from the Italian andare, which means to walk. So it's a, a tempo that walks. By itself, it doesn't really pose much of a problem, but it begins to be problematic when we consider the modifications of andante. For instance, we know allegretto, allegro is fast and allegretto would be slower than allegro. But what does andantino mean, which is a diminutive of andante? If we think that andante is basically a fast tempo, then andantino would be slower than andante. If we take andante to be a relatively slow tempo, then andantino would be slower than andante. And we have cases of both these uses in the time we are talking about, the beginning of the 19th century. Around 1820 or so, 
Andante began to be considered really a slow tempo. So after this time, probably Andantino means faster than Andante. But we know that Mozart and Rossini used Andantino as slower than Andante, and probably this is also the case with Giuliani. There are examples in Giuliani where Andantino considered as faster than Andante would be just too fast. Well, that was the first element of the three we were considering, the words indicating tempo. The second one is the meter in which the piece is written. Here we have to recall maybe something of the Renaissance music called the tactus. In Renaissance, uh, the, what we consider a measure was considered <coughs> a beat. So if this beat had two notes, then the pulse would be slower than if it had three notes or four notes. With this tactus idea, if we have a, a, a meter in 2-4, the pulse will probably be a little bit slower than in a 3-4 on a 4-4. All other things being equal, which is not always the case. <clears throat> but it is an element we need to consider. In case you are thinking that this is all theoretical musicologist stuff and it does not have any consequences for your playing, let's see a few examples. Let's take this famous studio etude by, by Sor, Opus 29 in C major. The usual tempo people take on this is more or less yeah. But if we look at the tempo word, which is allegro moderato, at the pulse, the meter, which is in two, four, and the figuration, which is mostly eighth notes all the time, I think that it can be argued that Sor intended a much faster tempo for this. Something like... This, of course, poses some technical problems further ahead, but we will get to that. Another etude in, in Opus 29 by Sor is uh, one in E minor, which is very rarely played, really, much less than it should, because uh, I think people don't understand really what is meant by the text. The tempo marked is Andante. It's in 2-4, and it moves basically in triplets of 16th notes. The tempo most people take here is... Yeah. Now, we need to know a couple of things first. When you had triplets going together with dotted rhythms in a relatively fast tempo, then these two rhythms were assimilated into a triplet. So it, it would really be... not just as, a, as an example when Czerny talks about the Beethoven sonatas and Czerny was a student of Beethoven's he says that the famous moon, moonlight sonata the adagio the first movement should be the dotted rhythm should be played after the triplet which means that if he didn't say that it would be played together with the triplet yeah. In this case, in this etude in E minor, we can, I think, assume that the two rhythms should be assimilated. And Andante also is something to consider because we have a two four pulse and the melody moves basically in eighth notes. The melody is. So 
we, if we put those, these two things together, the result would be something like... like I think it's much more interesting, you know, very passionate melody. And also a lot easier to play. Well, maybe the, the most important thing we need to know about the differences in performance practice between classical era and today is the idea of what it means to play well. For us to play well means basically to play on tempo, to play everything that the composer wrote, to obey every dynamic indication, and so on. Uh, in classical music we have, I think, much more leeway, and it's actually required by the style. Let me read you a quote by Louis Spohr, a great violinist and one of the people who inv invented the job of orchestra conducting, by the way. Style is the way in which the singer of or player executes the word noted by the composer. If he or she gives faithful, faithfully what is written in notes, signs and words of art, this is called the correct style. If the player adds ideas and if they are capable of intellectually animate the subject in such a way that the listener may discover and participate in the composer's intentions, this is called a beautiful style in which correction, sentiment and elegance are united. And I think this needs to be read in collaboration with something that Czerny wrote also. Czerny says, almost in every line there are some notes or passages where a small and often quite imperceptible relaxation or acceleration of the movement is necessary to embellish expression and raise the interest of the listener. Well, we, we, we can think this is more or less normal. I mean, nobody plays like a MIDI, you know, mechanically equal. But uh, it's interesting to know what Czerny considered imperceptible. This comes in the next paragraph. He says that it's about one four to one six of the movement. And this is a lot by our standards. a quarter note 100 metronome and accelerate to 120 or relax, relax to an 80, this would be very, very noticeable. This doesn't mean that you are changing the tempo continually. These are local fluctuations. Oh. 